All right. Good evening, family. Good evening, family. It is Bible study time. Believers night. Believers night. Believers <laughs> night. We're excited that you joined us uh, for this night. Listen, do me a favor before we start. I need you to like and I need you to share this video. You know, uh, Pastor Ricky, like when we take the time to uh, like our videos, like the thumbs up that's on there, we like the videos, it sends an algorithm to uh, other people who may be looking at things that right. are about faith and about God. Right. So help us with that today. If you could just like this video, it's, there's a thumbs up as you're watching this. And also, we need you to talk in the chat, the live chat. Live chat. Look in the live chat. There's another button on there that says um, live chat. Click on that, jump in that live chat so we can have some dialogue as you're going back and forth tonight. But I'm excited about this lesson tonight, Pastor Ruby. It's going to be good. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. Type the city that you're watching from tonight. We in McDonough, Henry County, up south, we're here. And uh, I want you to type the city that you're uh, watching from tonight um, so that we can know who's here with us uh, tonight. Pastor Ruby, I want to get into this, but can I pray first? Yes, please. Okay. Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your spirit that lives on the inside of us. We thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord. You've given us um, life. You've yeah, given us God. breath. It's truly because of you that we live, we breathe, and we have our being, Lord. So we want to give you uh, our all, Lord. Yes, we we want to uh, sacrifice even uh, this time tonight, Lord, to come to hear your word. I pray that our hearts are postured and our ears are open to hear what thus saith the Lord. I pray for expectation tonight, Lord, that something will be said that would shift our thinking, mm. shift our thoughts as we dig into this culture war study, Lord. And we know that you're with us. We give you praise. We give you glory for it. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 and amen. Amen. All right, Pastor Ruki, we are getting into this, yes. this study of culture wars. Corey, this is something that we've been dealing with mm -hmm. um, for this entire month. And last week, if you missed it, please take an opportunity to go back on our YouTube and watch last week. It right. was incredible. And Pastor Ruki, truly, it's something that everybody deals with, everybody goes through. Right. Um, and we talked about trials, yes. like understanding trials, and, and, and even as believers, um, we're going to go through different trials in our lives, but how do we navigate through those things as, as believers, as being a part of the kingdom culture? Kingdom citizen. Yeah, yeah we, we deal with it differently from a different perspective. So that was so powerful last week. Go back, read that, watch it, get into it. It'll help you for what we're doing this week. Pastor Rookie, what are we digging in this week? This week? Well, this <laughs> entire series, we are um, really just providing, you know, us with strategies on how to live as foreigners because mm. we are foreigners. We say we this all the time. We are in the world, but we're not of, of the world. That's right. And so we're giving uh, just strategies on how to live in um, as a foreigner, how to mm -hmm. live as a kingdom citizen in this increasingly secular culture. Yeah. And so um, we're digging into First Peter. And last week we talked um, through First Peter chapter one, mm -hmm. and this week we're going to go through First Peter chapter two. So go two. ahead and get your Bibles, get your uh, journals, whatever you're using um, for tonight's uh, study. And then even when this is all said and done, I want to encourage you and challenge you to read First Peter chapter two in its mm -hmm. entirety. It will bless your life. Um, and so we're going to jump right into it tonight. Um, tonight we are touching on the subject, be this, mm. be this. Yes. All right. Can y'all type that in the chat box uh, this evening? Be this. be this. There's a lot of things that we can be, mm -hmm. right? Right. But as kingdom citizens, um, Peter is telling us in, in, in second Peter, mm -hmm. I mean, first Peter chapter two, that we should be this type mm. of Christian. Okay. We should be this type of Christian. It's easy, right, <laughs> to be all sorts of things, especially living in this world. Um, we can be a whole lot of stuff, right? But Peter is telling us and he's challenging us as believers to be this type of Christian. Oh my goodness. This type of citizen. And so we're gonna discover that um, today. So Patrick, I was talking yeah. to somebody a couple of days ago. You're talking mm -hmm. about being this, right? And somebody was, you know, you know, people they always l love to be uh, 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 transparent, you know, and honest about the type of Christians they are. Right. She said, I, I ain't gonna lie. She said, Pastor, I'm, I'm a cussing Christian. I am a cussing Christian. She said, but God is working on me. Right. And 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 and, and He's pulling that away from me. So right. to your point, you know, uh, Peter's not telling us to be that type. Of Christian as we go into right. this, but I think so many times, and we'll get into it when we read this, there are so many things that are left on the inside of us mm -hmm. that need to come out, right? That are associating associating us with our old self. But we're gonna get right. into that mm -hmm. as we read this. And um, even clarify that because you Yeah. Know, yeah. Absolutely. So it's in here. So we'll 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 get into that. But Pastor Chuck, can you read um 
first Peter chapter two, yeah. um, verses, um, I didn't start from the beginning, uh, one through 10. Okay. One through 10. Mm-hmm. All right. That's first Peter two, um, one through 10. It says, therefore rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Mm-hmm. Like newborn babies crave spiritual milk so that it, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Somebody else just type that. The Lord is good. He the really Lord is. is good. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in the scripture, it says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Mm -hmm. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the capstone and a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble, why? Because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. Mm. Verse nine says this, but you, you and I are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Somebody just type that. I'm the light. I am the light. Verse 10 says this. Once you were not a people, Hmm. but now you are a people of God. Hmm. Once you had not received mercy, Hmm. but now you have received mercy. Wow. Pastor Chuck, let me just, can I ask this Ooh, question? Gee, 10 verses. I just got my whole life yeah. read to me. Go ahead. Let me ask, <laughs> let me ask you this question. Okay. And I want y'all to ponder on this question as well. Um, but what would you say most um, defines people? Mm. It can be believers, it can be non-believers, um, and gives people their identity. Like in just in general, like where, yeah. where, where do you feel like people get their identity from or their what defines them? I, I think a lot of people, and this is for you to even watching, I think a lot of people get their identity in what they do. Mm. You're a teacher. That's Rukia, the teacher. Right. Um, right. Um, that's that's the right family. The, the, oh, they, they make T-shirts. They, they they're pastors. Right. Um, that's so and so. He's a he's a uh, uh, that's Chris. He's a lawn care man. He's a. Right. People are defined sometimes they, 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 uh, their identity is by what they do. Mm. Yeah. So I guess I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It really does because I feel like people do find their identity in whether it is their appearance, mm-hmm. you know, their job, their yeah. status, their finances, yeah. um, even their political views, you yeah. know, things of that nature. You know, you find your identity in that. So I want y'all to. Just put in, you don't have to put in chat box if you don't want to, but, you know, <laughs> jot it down, <laughs> jot it down and really think about it. Because sometimes we don't always think about, hey, what really, what, what do I find my identity in? Mm. What really defines me? Wow. And I feel like the best person to be able to share that information with you, if you want to be transparent, is the people in your life that mm. you trust the most. Yeah. Going to them and ask them, what do you, how, how would you define me? Yeah. That's you know, good. and really taking that serious. Um, and taking it before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because truthfully, the very first be this that we're going to talk about today, I want y'all to write it down, put it in the chat box, is that this is what Peter is saying in this particular verse. He's saying Christians should be not defined by all of these things that we have defined ourselves as being, Mm -hmm. but Christians should define themselves by God's kingdom. Wow. By God's kingdom. So be this, be, be the type of Christian that is not defined by everything else and do not find your identity in those things, wow. but defines your identity in by God's kingdom is defined by God's kingdom. Because the That's truth good. of the matter is, is that the foundation of everything that we do mm-hmm. in this life, right? Our identity 
it's, it's founded on our identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want us to, to look back at verse four that you read. Mm -hmm. It says, you are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. Mm. You know, and, and this is to go back to what you said in the be very beginning, you know, sometimes you can be like that cussing Christian, right? Yeah. And say, this is just who, how I'm defined and this is just who I am. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not there yet. God is still working. And there's truth to that. Yeah. Because although we have come to Christ, each and every one of us who are listening today, you have come to Christ, but you are still coming to Christ. Mm. Right. You have come to Christ because you gave your life to Jesus, mm -hmm. but you are still coming. Verse four says you are coming to Christ, yeah. meaning there's still some work to be done. There's yes. still some things you have not arrived yet. Mm. As long uh -oh. as you are here on the face of this earth and God, you still have breath in your lungs. You have not arrived yet. Mm. There are still some things, right? You are coming to Christ. You are coming to him, yes. right? And to be able to, to live in, in such a way. Right. So coming to Christ is required. Yes. The process of getting it right and getting all that stuff out of us um, that was in the world and the secular world, because we're now being defined as kingdom, kingdom. Mm -hmm. citizens. Yeah. And so there are some things that we have to um, rid ourselves of. Mm -hmm. That's what he starts what off says, this yeah. from. It says rid yourself Therefore, of what? rid yourselves of all malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, all slander of every kind. Yeah. So he's, right. he's giving us that instruction. Right. And so, you know, you know, and, it, and, it, and it's not going to um, be pleasing to everybody. It's not going to be understood rather by, by other people yeah. in the world. That's what we've called. He says, you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy, holy nation. nation, you know, and all of these different things. Why? He's letting us know that we are to stand out. We mm. are to look different, good. right? We are not to blend in. We are defined not by this worldly kingdom, mm. but we are defined by God's kingdom. And I love how he says in that same verse, pastor, he says, he says he was rejected by people, mm -hmm. but he was chosen by God. Oh God yeah. And so people are going to reject you. They're not going to understand this new identity. They're mm. not going to understand um, what, what defines you now, because maybe last year you were defined by some other things. Yeah. But now you understand that I am, I have a different right yes. uh understanding and identity of who I am. I'm royal priesthood. I'm chosen nation. Chosen. I'm a holy people, all of that. And so people are going to reject it. Just like they rejected Jesus. Pastor Rookie, at yeah. the end of that verse, when it says on verse nine, it says, because you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy yeah. nation. It says toward the end, it says that you may declare the praise of him who called you out Whoa. of darkness into his wonderful light. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody like called you out? Y'all been in that situation where you've done something, <laughs> somebody just like called you out. Oh, you know you, they, they called you out. So it, there was an alertness. There was something that, um, that, that had to, uh, there was a change right. that had to happen immediately when they called you out, you know, for whatever reason. But that's what this is saying is telling mm -hmm. us God called us out of that. He, when he called us out of that darkness wow. into his marvelous light, there was a change mm. immediately. God had to pull you out of something. So it's, it's, it, it's a magnificent change though, Pastor, yes. when you think about it. Yep. Yeah. I love this. I love it. It's so good. Wow. Okay. So the first one is be this, be like Christians should be defined by, the by kingdom. God's kingdom. By God's That's kingdom. the first one. That's All right, good. be this. The second one is this. Um, you already read this scripture, but I want you to read it again. Read verse nine, mm -hmm. verse 11 and 12 through 12, and then verse 15. Okay. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 11. Dear friends, I urge you as, here's this word, Pastor Rookie, aliens, somebody type that in the chat, aliens, and strangers in this world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. You said verse 12, Pastor Rookie? Mm -hmm. Live such good lives among the pagans, that's the people that's not saved, that they live, live such good lives among the pagans that they accuse you of doing wrong they see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Let me read that one more time, 12. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. 
what you said, 15? 15. For it is God's will. That's proper right there, y'all. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorance, the ignorant talk of foolish people. Wow. So, so okay, so you, you just read those verses, and hopefully y'all were following along truthfully. After reading those verses, Pastor Chuck, and y'all can answer this too, what challenges you when you just read that? Like, is there anything like, like challenges or could be a challenge to believers um, in I those mean, verses? <laughs> I wish we could have read 13, but, but yes. I mean, I think 12 lives such good lives among the pagans that they accuse you of doing wrong they may see your good deeds and glorify God. I mean, I think that can be, in some ways, I, I think that can be God's challenge. I mean, that can be challenging as, as believers. Um, well, I, I, I think, Pastor Ruki, honestly, th defining this, because I think when people say live good lives, they equate that with living a life of perfection. Mm. Wow. Live good lives, live righteous, li you know, righteous living equals perfection mm. but it, it doesn't equal perfection but i think a lot of times we live our lives we can live our lives in such a way where if we fall ourselves in a, a stumble we, we fall we ultimately equate that as man i'm like i'm not living right mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not doing the right things you know it's telling us in this verse it says live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, because we've all experienced that in this life, that um, we're, we're, we're trying to do the right thing. We're, we're, we're living that righteous life and we found ourselves people falling. People still accuse you. Right? People still accuse you. <laughs> but, but I believe this is an encouragement to tell us, keep, keep living. Yeah. And I, I think a big part of that too, Pastor Ruki, is that we're having that repentant heart. Right. Because we're going to fall, but continue living that life because no matter what, like you said, people are going to, I've, I've learned, Pastor Ruki, that you're not going to be able to please and people are right. going to get it. And that's what he's saying is that people aren't going to be able to, they're not going to understand right. because of this new, this new leaf or, 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 or coming out of this darkness into the light. It, it's going to be an adjustment for everybody. But Pastor Chuck, isn't like those situations when people are accusing you and people are saying those different things concerning you, you know, those are the, those are the, the times, the challenging times where it's the hardest. Mm, that's true. Like to live according to the kingdom principle. Yeah, why, why though? You know, because I feel like those are the, the, the challenging things because it shows like, okay, is this, is this word that you talk about and that you say you read in and that you say that this in you, is it really in you? Mm. Because I feel like it's in those challenges where we're able to see what's really still there and what we have yet to really submit wow. and what we have yet to rid ourselves of. Because see, I heard people say this a lot of times, like, you know, I'm, I'm holy, but I'm still hood, you know, <laughs> and if you cross me, like I take it there that, you know, I'm yeah. God is still working and he is because we're still coming to yes. Christ. So there still is um, a growth and a development mm. and maturity that is happening. Right. But we can see even those growth, the growth in our lives mm. through those challenges. Can we still do good mm. even when people accuse us or come against us that's that's this, this this is how the world the world operates in that way but the kingdom is an upside down kingdom and it says no when people do wrong when people accuse you of things that is not true and it's you know things that you're doing that is right mm. right that you still what does it say it's you still right do what's right 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 you still treat them right you still treat them good you still handle the situation um, from a kingdom way. So this is the second Good point, yep. right? Peter is saying, be this. Christians should be a light to their neighbor. Mm. So even in the midst of darkness, because he says, you know, we've been pulled out of darkness into light. All of this has happened to us. We are a royal, you know, nation, a royal priesthood, holy nation, mm -hmm. all of that. But he's saying, I want you to be this. See, in the world, it was saying, be, be how the world, you know, would respond in yeah. those situations. Mm -hmm. But as a kingdom citizen, we have to be the light be the in light. darkness. Yeah. We have to be the light to our neighbors because this is how they, they're going to be able to see Christ in every circumstance, in every circumstance. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. People can be won to Christ. Watch this by you being a light in dark situations.
Mm. Nobody going to be one to Christ if you're calling yourself a Christian and then you turning up at every single time and every moment when there's opposition. Lord have mercy. You can really, through, <laughs> through your behavior as kingdom, as being the light in dark situations, it can uh. literally, it, it's so much power in this. It can literally um, change a man's heart and bring them to a place of wanting to serve Christ because they see that you are not responding the way that the world Mm. would typically respond oh, that's so i can't good. get them roused up and ready to fight because i'm, I'm see something different mm. so god is saying you can win your neighbor by being the light watch Gosh. this even when they slander you because you don't follow their beliefs and values yes right so they that's may good. say little things because you're not doing what they think you should do and what the world is doing and how you respond and how you should respond right he says even when they slander your name, continue to be the light. Mm. Amen? That's, that's heavy right there, Pastor That's Ruki. good. Wow. Continue to be light. All right, are y'all ready for the third one? Let's do it. The third one. All right, Pastor, can you read um, verses 13 and 14? Yes, 13 and 14. 1 Peter 2, 13 and 14. It says this, submit, oh, there's that word, boy, that S word, <laughs> oh, Lord. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as a supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. Mm. You said verse 15, Pastor Ruki? Um, just 13 and 14. Okay. And then um, can you grab Acts 5? We're going to look at Acts 5, 28 through 29. Acts 5, 28 through 29. Ready? Yeah. It says that Acts 5, 28, 29. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Verse 29. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than man. Wow. Okay, so these are two uh -oh. these are two verses here, okay. right? Um, and this is this these are strategies on how to live as kingdom citizens mm -hmm. in this secular world, mm -hmm. right? So be this, write this down. Christians should be respectful, and we use this term on Sunday when I talked about honor. Mm. We talked about everyone that we should honor, and one of the people that I said was those who are in authority, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, you know, whoever is in authority over you, spiritually speaking or in the natural. Mm -hmm. He says, Christians should be honorable to human authority, mm -hmm. all right? So we should be this, yeah. and I love this because you know, it's not saying that we're going to always, and I said this on Sunday, so this is right in line, yeah. but it's not to say that um, we're honoring them or respecting them because of their impeccable performance mm. or, or, or that we agree with everything that they, you know, you know, we trust mm -hmm. everything that the government is saying, because mm -hmm. these, I'm telling you, these some, these some things that the government, you know, says <laughs> and, and, and wants us to do and different things and things that will probably come in the future that we may not necessarily trust, yeah. right? Those decisions and those things to be righteous, right? Mm -hmm. And to be right and all of those different things. And even maybe, you know, spiritual leaders, pastors, all mm -hmm. of the, you know, we may not always agree, right? Yeah, it's but, true. but God tells us in his word as kingdom citizens, he says, be this, be honorable mm -hmm. to those who are in the authority, authority right. over you. That's right. Right. And I love this part of first Peter two and 13 that you read. This is the reason why. And I should have said this on Sunday. Maybe, That's all right. But maybe yeah, God just wanted us to say it today. <laughs> right. This verse 13, it says, for the Lord's sake, mm. submit to all human authority, whether the king of state and, and such and such. And it continues to go. But I want us to look at that first phrase for, for whose sake, the Lord's sake. For whose sake? The Lord's sake. For whose sake? The Lord. The Lord's sake, <laughs> right? It's not for the sake of man. It's not for your sake. Mm -hmm. It's not for your husband's sake, your wife's sake. It's not for your children's sake that you should honor. It's not for anybody else's sake, but we do this for the Lord's sake. Mm. And that's powerful, y'all. It is powerful. Because 
there's many instances where we felt like we didn't want to respect or honor those people that God has put into authority over mm. us for our sake, because we just didn't want it because we didn't, because we didn't like certain things or we didn't agree with certain things and yeah. we don't, you know, um, you know, like their performance and such and such, but it's, it's not for our sake. Mm -mm. For the Lord's sake. It's for the Lord's sake. He says to respect and to honor. Mm. And I'm not saying that we are to, to obey and submit to everything yeah. that happens because there is an exception to this, to this yes. rule. <laughs> Watch me on this, right? There's an exception because there may be some things that go against the word of God, mm -hmm. that things that may come down the pipeline, even in our, in our government, mm -hmm. that may go against the word of God. And this scripture is not saying, oh, you got to submit to everything. But if it goes against the word of God, even in Daniel's time, yeah. it, it was going against the word of God and what he believed was true. And he did not submit himself to that. He continued yeah, yeah. to obey God. That's what Acts is talking about, yeah. right? We, we, we follow God and what God is saying. And if anything you're asking me to do, that goes for a husband yep. that's telling, you know, uh -oh. the wife and, and children <laughs> to do something that goes for children. People say that was honor your mother and father. I preached on that. Right. But your child does not have to honor you right. if you're telling them to do something that contradicts the word, the of, word God. of God. Yeah. Your wife does not have to honor you if you're telling that wife to do something against the word of God. Mama. Your, uh, you don't have to honor your pastor if we're telling you to do something that goes against the word of God. Amen. Amen. So there's an exception to that, yes. right? So we have to use wisdom. But Christians should be honorable to human authority. Amen. That's that. Amen. All right. We got one more, Pastor. One more. All right. Um, are y'all ready for the last one? Let's do it. Last one tonight. All right. Let's look at um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Verse 17. It says, show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honor the king. Wow. Read that mm. first part one more time. Show proper respect to the people you love. Mm. To the person that does you right. <laughs> Are you adding? To the, I want to make sure y'all read for yourselves, right? This is what the scripture is saying, though. I, I gave you two that it wasn't in there. The scripture is saying, show proper respect to everyone. Yeah. Mm, mm -hmm. That's powerful. Love the brotherhood of believers, mm -hmm. fear God, and honor the king. Right. So I, I, I did use this scripture on Sunday mm -hmm. when I talked about who we ought to honor. Yeah. And one thing that I said was we honor everybody, yep. right? Because Peter tells us in that scripture, honor everyone. Mm -hmm. Love God, fear God, you know, love the brotherhood, mm -hmm. right? And the brotherhood, I, I mentioned this on Sunday as well, the brotherhood being the body of Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. The body of Christ, the local church, the people that God, you know, has placed at Emmanuel out of the world. that There should be love. Yeah. Right. For each and every brother and sister, a part of our local church body yeah. and the body of Christ as 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 a whole. And so what I found very interesting is that many people professing Christians, people mm -hmm. who profess the name of the Lord um, and put their faith in, in, in Christ alone. Right. I found, especially since the pandemic, y'all, maybe, you know, y'all can attest to this, but, or understand this, but we have thought it okay mm -hmm. to isolate ourselves mm -hmm. from the community of believers, mm. to live in isolation, right? Mm -hmm. To live apart from the church. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, and I feel like you preached this on some time where you said, you know, the enemy's tactic is to isolate us. Mm -hmm. Right. As we're going through and as we're navigating through different things. And that's one thing that trials do, as we talked mm -hmm. last week, is it kind of causes you to yeah. kind of like distance yourself <laughs> from the church. Yeah. But <laughs> that's a trick of the enemy because it that's is. not the culture of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this be this is this Christians should be connected to God's people. Mm -hmm. Christians should be right that in the chat box. Christians should be connected to God's people. Mm. People say all the time, 
I love God, but I don't have nothing to do with his church. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with his church. <laughs> the people. I don't like the organized religion. <laughs> right. and, and, you know, and they have all these excuses, right? But Christians should be connected to God's people. How, are, how else are we going to encourage one another? Mm -hmm. How are we going to spur one another on to the things of God? How are we going to teach? How are we going to build and equip the saints to work the ministry? How are we going to work the ministry together if we are isolated from the ministry? Mm. Because we don't, and it's, it ultimately boils down to this, because we don't love the ministry. Mm. Uh oh. So now we're coming against what Peter said when he says, respect everyone, love the brotherhood, meaning he's saying the brotherhood is the community. Mm. Yeah. It's the community. You know what I mean? So when the enemy tells you on Sunday morning, oh, you can just stay home. No, <laughs> I love the community and I'm going to show up because. <laughs> There's something to be deposited in me and there's something that I can give and deposit to others. Mm. Right. And so he calls us to that. You have anything to add to that? Pastor well, Chuck? I mean, just to that last part you said, Pastor Ricky, I mean, I think it's just important that and I think sometimes even as as pastors, um, it 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 pulls on you when um, people are connected for um, the excitement is in the beginning. They're, they're connected. Maybe they're going through something. Maybe they're navigating through a some type of turmoil or trial and it's like you know it's like i gotta get to the church right but it's like it, in, in time if you're not truly connected you begin to fade off right you know and, and sometimes we see that as, as as pastors you know there's there's the excitement but then people will leave and 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 they're not connected any longer and, right. and we don't see them you know but i think it's important as you were saying um when you read the scripture and this is what this is what we go by this is what we live by. This word, the word of God is telling us to love the brotherhood of believers, fear God, honor the king. Um, that connection, you always hear us preach that so much mm -hmm. connection, community. You, I mean, you, you got to come to the house. It's, it's online. It's cool. And I love it. We're watching this online tonight. And I think that's great. But I think when you have the opportunities to come together right. with like minded believers mm -hmm. and to encourage one another and to build each other up. You know, and to grow together, there's something about, there's something about that. But the enemy, he knows. See, that's the thing. The enemy, he knows that. That's why he wants to isolate people during times of the transition or storm because he knows that they can just get to that house with other right. people. They're gonna be built up. They're gonna be encouraged. But that's the part that we have to play. Because listen, let me tell you, me and Pastor Ruggie don't necessarily always feel like getting up on Sunday going to preach. <laughs> not 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 in, we don't necessarily always feel like it see but that's why we have to separate our our, our flesh mm -hmm. because we have to be led by the spirit the spirit of the lord is saying hey i have you on assignment the spirit of the lord is saying that to you tonight right. i have you on assignment you, you got to fight past that flesh and saying i don't want to do but you got to be led and allow the spirit to speak to you so that you can continue to walk in the purpose and the destiny that God has designed for each and every one of you, but it's a choice that we all have to make. Yeah. We have we have to love the brotherhood, Pastor yeah. Ricky. We have to fear. We have to fear God. We have to honor the King. Honor. I'm glad she preached on that on Sunday because it's 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 key, like uh, being being honorable. Yeah, you know, and I feel like you just answered the last question that I was going to ask. You know, because the last question that I was going to ask was, how do you grow in this love mm. for the brotherhood, for the yeah. community of saints? And I believe you answered it beautifully. So I want to ask you this question in our closing tonight. Um, how are you loving mm. the people at your church mm. and even beyond just the body of Christ? But let's focus on Emmanuel. How well are you loving right now the people of Emmanuel Light of the World? Mm -hmm. I want you to really just ponder on that. How well am I loving? And then once you 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 um, come to that understanding, how well I'm I'm loving. What can I do to grow in this? Mm. What can I do to grow in loving the pastors that God has placed here at this house? Mm. Loving the brotherhood, your sisters and brothers that you do life with, and light group, and you know ministries that you're a part of. And even the new people that God is sending into our house, mm. how well am I loving the wow. body of Christ? And what can I do to grow in that particular area? God is telling us in, in this passage, be this. Mm -hmm. Let me run back all of them real quick. That's good. 
Be Christians who are defined by God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Be Christians who are the light to their neighbor. Wow. Be Christians who are respectful to human authority. Mm -hmm. And be Christians who are connected to God's people. Mm. Amen. Mm. My prayer is that you all were blessed tonight uh, yeah. by this message. And I want to challenge you to even go back. If you were not at church on Sunday, mm -hmm. I want you to go to YouTube, Facebook, our page, and go listen to that message. It was such a powerful message. I'm not just saying it because I preached. Oh, no, no, it was powerful. But I, but I want you to go back and listen to that um, message. And God just showed up in such a powerful way mm. on Sunday. Um, and God is doing something in the midst of Emmanuel out of the world. And there's going to be fruit that comes from it and from our obedience yes. and being and creating this, um, establishing this culture of the kingdom Absolutely. in our house. Amen. 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 Let's pray tonight. I pray you're blessed. And um, this, this word, I'm telling you, it, it uh, it's a valuable word of God. Yes. I mean, this, this is, this is, this is what we need. This is our nourishment, Pastor Rick, as believers. Yes. Yes. We got to dive and dig into for this. It. I pray yes. we hunger for it. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, amen. we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this word that you gave us. Lord, we thank you for the deposit, Father God, tonight, Lord, that even as we hear this, we're not just hearing it and it's going in one ear and out of the other. And, and then we ask ourselves the question, Lord, I need more. I need more. But yes. with what you've given us, yes. let us feast on what you gave us tonight, Lord, and let us begin to, to eat and to, and to digest your word tonight, Lord, that we can grow as believers. We can grow as uh, brothers and sisters, Father God, in this kingdom culture, so many things coming at us from left and right, from the mm. world, and and different traps and snares, Lord, uh, to to pull us in. But Father God, truly, we know that it's Your Word that sustains us. Mm. It's Your Word that will keep us. Every individual, Lord, yes. watching tonight, I pray that there will be a hunger, mm. Lord, that will Thank begin you, to um, overtake them, Lord, for prayer. Yes. For, for revelation in your word, Father God. Mm. Father, that, that every wall that, that, that may be blocking, Lord, the word uh, to come in and to penetrate their heart tonight, that it would be broken in yes, Jesus' God. name, Lord. That there would be a yielding. And as, as, as verse uh, 13 uh, or 15 told us, Lord, and Peter, Lord, that, that, that we should submit ourselves. Let there be a level of submission, Lord, mm. a godly submission, Lord, so that we can receive what you have for us, Lord. So we give you praise. We give you glory tonight, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that even as we are going through this study, that we understand, Lord, that it's the kingdom culture, Lord, that mm -hmm. we live by. It's the kingdom. We are kingdom citizens, yes, Lord. God. Lord, and we live by kingdom rules. So we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, yeah. amen, amen. Love y'all. Love you. And also just want to say um, that the lessons, the series that we're doing mm -hmm. through Believer's Night is derived from uh, PursueGod.org. Yes. You can check that out um, under Culture Wars and um, you know, get some information from that. Amen. But also, yes. um, if you're giving tonight, we, yes. we missed this last week, but if you're giving tonight, we want to give you an opportunity to be able to sow, sow into God's word, sow into the house of the Lord. Amen. And you can give via our cash app, which is money symbol, E-L-O-T-W, um, yeah, what is it? 5415. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 5415. Uh, or you can visit our website at elotw.com forward slash give. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Have a good night. Love you. Bye-bye.